Привет, my fellow aviation lovers, because today we are flying to Moscow. But my question to you is, would you fly a Russian airline? I'm taking a trip on Aeroflot 350, the airline's latest flagship and probably the greatest Airbus A350 ever built. But the question remains, how did Russian's flag carrier go from being the most dangerous in the world to becoming one of the safest in service? Let me try to answer all those questions on today's flight from Dubai to Milan with a little stopover in Moscow's new terminal on the one and only Aeroflot. You guys know I'm also a sucker for exotic airlines. Right here behind me is the check-in for Syrian Air flying to Damascus on the Airbus A340. A trip that I've planned next year. Uh, very much looking forward to that one. So hit, a, hit the like button right now if you want me to go to Syria. So check-in isn't open yet, but look at this. The world's worst airline. I mean, apart from the fact that they are, I've been chasing them for one and a half year now for a thousand dollar refund which they still haven't refunded and I follow up and I follow up an absolute disgrace of an airline isn't it so but before we check in let me explain you the very interesting story of Aeroflot the Russian flag carrier during the Soviet Union Aeroflot happened to be the world's largest airline with over 600,000 people operating over 10,000 aircraft though mostly Tupolev's Iyushin's, Antonov's and Yakolev's with a very poor safety record. In fact, 8,231 passengers have lost their lives flying the Russian flag carrier, making it the world's most dangerous airline. But things changed with the end of the Soviet Union. Aeroflot went through a massive effort to modernize its fleets, getting rid of all Russian planes and only operate Airbuses and Boeings, with the exception of the Sukhoi Superjet, the only Aeroflot plane to be involved in a fatal crash in this century. Nowadays, the airline operates one of the youngest and safest fleet globally with a great reputation. So very smooth check-in experience with Aeroflot flights, apparently full, so I hope that I get my own row in the very back of the 350. I also met some subscribers at the check-in who happened to work for the Aeroflot bonus program. Some really nice guys, so I hope uh, it's going to continue. This is three times more. 350 is about to touch down, 10 minutes, so let's go to the gate and let's get a first glimpse of this absolute beauty. Guys, I just spotted something over there and I want to hear your opinion. It, it's something very special, something very, very interesting. I'm going to use the other camera so I have a good zoom. So this is the special expo livery of um, Emirates of the 380. Some say it looks like a lollipop, some say that's the worst livery the world has ever seen. It's definitely very aggressive on the eye, very colorful and also very unique. What do you think of this bird? What do you think of that livery? Give it a rating from 1 to 10. I want to hear your opinion on that. I have so many questions today, but so I want to see that comment section on fire today. And there she is, guys. Some airports make it very difficult to get a good shot of an airplane, but there she comes, the Airbus A350. And the livery is also quite new. So usually the body of the aircraft is silver, kept in silver, but that was the first one where the body is kept white. So that's the difference uh, between the 777 and the 350 of Aeroflot. Absolute beauty. I can't wait to see the cabin, the interior. So let's go to the gate and let's get ready for a five hour flight to Moscow on Aeroflot's flagship. But guys, before I go on board, I would much appreciate if you take one second out of your day and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. It was then time to board one of the most beautiful Airbus A350s in the industry. Well, at least in my opinion. The plane comes in a three-class configuration with 28 seats in business, 
24 in premium economy and 264 in economy class, which comes in a 333 configuration. Aeroflot has 6 in service with another 16 Airbus A350s joining the fleet within the next 2 years. So guys, and here we are, welcome on board this absolute beauty of an airplane. It looks just like the perfect economy class. It looks new, it looks innovative, it looks sharp, it looks sexy. It is really a masterpiece of an airline. The interior is beautiful, the colors are just outstanding. Very lovely crew as well. You have mood lights everywhere. It is just like, yeah we don't save money on this interior this is the message that comes across here and um, very very impressed so far so let me give you a bit of a seat tour every seat features a personal entertainment screen with usb and usb c plugs as well as a universal power outlet but it's the little details that make the seat appear extremely classy also, the personal entertainment offers plenty of choice, and one of my favorites must be definitely the outside cameras. So even though the flight is fully booked, well not almost fully booked, there's like 15 seats left in economy class, I checked expert flyer and it says this row, 38A to C, was blocked. So I just was very cheeky once again, instead of taking my assigned seat, 38K, uh, which said the row was fully occupied. I just moved over here pretending that I don't know the difference between A and K. <laughs> the cheeky tricks of the freaking flyers, right? Awful people. For the safety feature demonstration, we, ask we were the then pushed back for an on time departure, and the crew was handing out safety cards while we taxiing to the runway. Something that I've never seen before. <laughs> Another cool feature on Aeroflot's Airbus A350 is the Wi-Fi connectivity to some very reasonable prices. My question for you, do you ever use the in-flight Wi-Fi? So while I'm very impressed with the hard product on the 350 here, uh, the soft product is a bit lacking. Um, nice crew, I said that, but it literally took them two hours to serve drink for the economy class cabin. So now I assume, I reckon, that it's probably gonna take another two hours just to serve some food, which they said they are. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a bit, uh, yeah, underperforming, I'd say, but it is what it is, hey? And I kept on waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So yeah, finally it took 3 hours and 15 minutes for my food to reach uh, the last row. Uh, crew is, I'd say, overwhelmed. Um, very slow, uh, while the hard product is amazing, the crew, I think they need a bit of more training or uh, something, but generally it uh, doesn't matter which airline you fly, white body, economy, uh, usually after an hour you have a hot meal in front of you. but. Um, very lot of differences to a regular economy class uh, service so uh, it was a bit underwhelming now the food looks good and let's see what it tastes like the food was indeed very lovely and there was plenty of choice fish chicken or beef so guys, it's time for the infamous Lou review and also the Lou here on the 350 of Aeroflot doesn't disappoint. Um, I can't remember that in the rear that you have like a stretched Lou like this. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it on a, on a 350. Maybe that's an option you can go for as an airline, but I only know this uh, kind of design usually from 777s where it's a bit more spacious, but it's beautiful. It's clean. It's like the cutting edge of what a loo can be. It's definitely uh, very, very um, impressive. As, as, as impressive as a loo can be. Uh, yeah, but 
now I do have to pee and then we have two more hours and then I'll have 12 hours on the ground in Moscow we're gonna to go to the Edward Snowden Hotel uh, and then continue to fly tomorrow morning on the 321 but now let me have a look so we have finally started our descent into Moscow and uh, interestingly we'd be landing at a new terminal C which I'm sure many of you haven't seen yet so we're gonna explore it a little bit um, we're also gonna to head to the lounge and um, yeah I have to find a hotel like or something I know there's a few transit hotels uh, on the ground in uh, Sherrod Medievo uh, but yeah we have just to find one so I think that's gonna be uh, another adventure so join me for the hunt <laughs> We then touched down in freezing cold Moscow, but I was very excited at this point to see the sea terminal, which is the new terminal for international flights. So please join me for a little tour of the new hub of Aeroflot. It is cold, eh? See you, man. Eh? So guys, and welcome to the brand new beautiful sea terminal here of Sheremetyevo. Uh, beautiful transit experience. As a little boy, you saw that at fist bump in the jet bridge. He was like, welcome to Russia. My friend, you're wearing shorts, it's too cold. <laughs> Getting mocked by a little boy. Um, also, yeah, transit experience was smooth, easy. And now I'm very curious to see uh, what this terminal has to offer. I don't know whether you guys remember my um, Nordwind flight where I got stuck in transit for like two hours. This time, this is not gonna happen. But look at it, so beautiful. And it also seems like nobody gives a shit about masks here. <laughs> Interesting. Mercedes-Benz Cafe, look at this. Fancy. Well done, Moscow. I'm impressed. This is a beautiful terminal. So there was a very lovely lady at the reception and she said, oh, your flight is tomorrow morning, so, um, and they can't really let you in uh, a few hours before your flight only. So, but she said there is a transit hotel called Get Sleep. So I'm gonna head there and uh, yeah, try to get some sleep actually. <laughs> Where is the hotel? I hope it's not some capsule hotel or something like that. Ooh. Found it. Get sleep. Is the room far from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 cool. That's cool. So I wasn't sure whether there is a hotel at Terminal C, right? That's new, right? So it's just... Really? Doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> So I. You want to get me the proper key then, eh? Another one. So this is my room here. It's kind of a capsule hotel. So this is the bed. Um, but it also comes with a, with a kind of like a small shower, toilet, sink, mirror. Uh, my I don't know. Is my hair on point? That's good. I have a good hair day today. I'm very, I'm very happy with that. My hair is performing really good today. But yeah, I think uh, for seven hours that should do. It's not too bad. You get a toothbrush here. All the amenities, water, slippers. It's not too bad. It's $135, but I'd rather have a good sleep and uh, instead of being all zombie because I stayed at the lounge all night, which they wouldn't even let me. So it's all good, it's all good. Look, green toothpaste. All right. So, uh, can I just say that the new GoPro 10 is amazing. Uh, great performance, the battery is lasting very long. Very happy, great purchase. So what I'm going to try now is get a bit of a sleep and then tomorrow morning we wake up and we're going to go check out the lounge. Apparently it's really good. And then we'll be experiencing the Airbus 321 to Milan. 
and uh, and then we can uh, also get a bit of a comparison what the old product looks like and comparing it with the 350 but sensational flight is really good I just had an amazing pizza as good as it can be for an airport pizza it's really good that terminal C here is pretty nice really really lovely always a great transit experience here unless you fly Nordwind well anyways guys this is it I'm gonna try and uh, catch up on a bit of sleep and then tomorrow we're gonna continue the journey Good night. Good morning, guys. I had better sleeps. <laughs> Let's go. Morning, how are you? Thank you very much. You're still here. What time do you go home? Oh, that's a long shift. Thank you so much, hey? And uh, you have three more hours to go. Oh. Then you finished. At six, no, f four more hours, four more hours. I'm in the wrong time zone, I'm still in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take care, hey? Bye. So guys, beautiful good morning. As you can see, five minutes ago, I still was fast asleep. Uh, now we're gonna go check out the brand new Malayev Malaj something lounge, which also Aeroflot uses here in the new Terminal C. But so quiet, there's no people here at this time of the day. So it's 5 a.m. and that's the time to be here at the airport. Actually, let's check out my flight leaves at 8.20, SU2414 Milano, gate C130, on time, which means 8 hours and 8 hours, 3 hours and 20 minutes. That's enough time to have a lovely breakfast, a nice coffee at the lounge, which probably at this time of the day won't be too busy short night I didn't have like like a deep deep sleep it was more like a dozing for like four or five hours and I had some weird dreams yeah I then entered the new lounge which looks very slick Morning. and comfortable and offers room for almost 700 passengers it has a half buffet meeting rooms and shower facilities. As an Aeroflot business class traveler or priority pass holder, you can access for free, or if you're willing to pay the fee, it's 3,500 ruble, which is around 45 US dollars. So guys, as expected, it's a really lovely lounge, not too busy. It's usually was always the problem with the Aeroflot lounge at the D terminal. They were packed. You couldn't find the seating any time of the day. But right now, there's nobody here. That's pretty good. And as expected, the buffet, the food here is very Russian inspired. So you can get meat, meat, and yeah, meat. But I'm in Russia, right? Um, so yeah. Four hours, three hours, three hours. I can do this. So, cheers. Oh, got some pure vodka to start today. I'm joking, just water. <laughs> All right, let's dig in. After a lovely breakfast at the lounge, I then made my way to the remote gate to fly the Airbus A321 all the way to Milan. Like an hour ago, there was not a single person at the terminal. Now it's packed. Look at all those people. So bus gate it is. I just checked the seat map. The flight looks pretty full. It's going to be an Airbus 321. Uh, three and a half hour flight time. So let's do this. 
let's go to Italy. Welcome on board Aeroflot's regional product, or also identified as an Airbus A321. The business class, which I have reviewed before, features 28 dedicated business class seats, superior to every single narrow-body plane in any Western airline. In the back, we have 142 seats in a standard 3-3 layout. Unfortunately, they don't feature any built-in personal entertainment, but you can stream it to your phone by connecting to the onboard Wi-Fi on this plane. We then pushed back for an on-time departure out of Moscow, and on our way to the runway, we taxied past the remains of the Sukhoi Superjet that crashed and burned out in 2019, covered by some cover. Once we reached our cruising altitude, a breakfast was served, which was rather lovely. It's just nice to see that Aeroflot isn't one of those airlines that tries to cut cost in the name of COVID. Very well done. But let me summarize today's flight experience, and to be honest, Aeroflot is a world-class airline, superior to the likes of Lufthansa or any US airline, and I'm absolutely in love with the Airbus A350, which has one of the best economy class cabins in the world. The service was kind, but super slow, and that's where they were lacking the most. Overall, Aeroflot is a great airline, which I wouldn't hesitate to fly again. Also, their regional Airbus A321 is a comfortable flying experience, and Aeroflot very much puts comfort over profit. So, guys, and this is it. I hope you enjoyed my short little trip to Moscow. And let me know in the comment section below what you think of Aeroflot. Also, check out my Patreon page for some extra perks to join my WhatsApp group or my monthly Zoom sessions. And simply, if you want to support my videos, that would be a great help. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and wherever you're off to, have a safe trip.